Manjusri is a bodhisattva associated with prajna insight in Mahayana Buddhism. In Tibetan Buddhism, he is also a yidam. His name means, "...gentle glory", Chinese, Miao Jixiang Miaole in Sanskrit. Manjusri is also known by the fuller name of Manjusrikamarabuddha, literally, "...Manjusri, still a youth", or, less literally, "...Prince Manjusri". Another deity name of Manjusri is Manjagosha. In Mahayana Buddhism Scholars have identified Manjusri as the oldest and most significant bodhisattva in Mahayana literature. Manjusri is first referred to in early Mahayana sutras such as the Prajnaparamita sutras and through this association, very early in the tradition he came to symbolize the embodiment of prajna transcendent wisdom. The Lotus Sutra assigns him a pure land called Vimala, which according to the Avadamsaka Sutra is located in the east. His pure land is predicted to be one of the two best pure lands in all of existence in all the past, present, and future. When he attains Buddhahood his name will be Universal Sight. In the Lotus Sutra, Manjusri also leads the Nagaraja's daughter to enlightenment. He also figures in the Vimalakirti Sutra in a debate with Vimalakirti where he is presented as an arhat who represents the wisdom of the Hinayana. An example of a wisdom teaching of Manjusri can be found in the Saptasatika Prajnaparamita Sutra This sutra contains a dialogue between Manjusri and the Buddha on the One Samadhi Ekavyuha Samadhi Sheng Yen renders the following teaching of Manjusri, for entering samadhi naturally through transcendent wisdom. Contemplate the five skandhas as originally empty and quiescent, non-arising, non-perishing, equal, without differentiation. Constantly thus practicing, day or night, whether sitting, walking, standing or lying down, finally one reaches an inconceivable state without any obstruction or form. This is the samadhi of one act Yixing san mei, yixing san mei. Vajrayana Buddhism Within Vajrayana Buddhism, Manjusri is a meditational deity and considered a fully enlightened Buddha. In Shingon Buddhism, he is one of the thirteen Buddhas to whom disciples devote themselves. He figures extensively in many esoteric texts such as the Manjusri Mula Kalpa and the Manjusrinamasamjiti. His consort in some traditions is Saraswati. The Manjusramula Kalpa, which later came to classified under Kriya Tantra, states that mantras taught in the Saiva, Garuda and Vainava Tantras will be effective if applied by Buddhists since they were all taught originally by Manjushri. Iconography Manjusri is depicted as a male bodhisattva wielding a flaming sword in his right hand, representing the realization of transcendent wisdom which cuts down ignorance and duality. The scripture supported by the Padma lotus held in his left hand is a Prajnaparamita Sutra, representing his attainment of ultimate realization from the blossoming of wisdom. Manjusri is often depicted as riding on a blue lion or sitting on the skin of a lion. This represents the use of wisdom to tame the mind, which is compared to riding or subduing a ferocious lion. In Chinese and Japanese Buddhist art, Manjushri's sword is sometimes replaced with a Ruyi scepter, especially in representations of his Vimalakirti Sutra discussion with the layman Vimalakirti. According to Berthold Laufer, the first Chinese representation of a Ruyi was in an 8th century Manjushri painting by Wu Daozi, showing it held in his right hand taking the place of the usual sword. In subsequent Chinese and Japanese paintings of Buddhas, Aruyi was occasionally represented as a Padma with a long stem curved like Aruyi. He is one of the four great bodhisattvas of Chinese Buddhism, the other three being Kasutagava, Avalokitesvara, and Samantavadra. In China, he is often paired with Samantavadra. In Tibetan Buddhism, Manjusri is sometimes depicted in a trinity with Avalokitesvara and Vajrapani. Mantras A mantra commonly associated with Manjusri is the following Om Arapakana D. The Rapakana is a syllabary consisting of 42 letters, and is named after the first five letters, A, Ra, Pa, Ca, Na. 
This syllabary was most widely used for the Gandhari language with the Kharosthi script but also appears in some Sanskrit texts. The syllabary features in Mahayana texts such as the Longa Prajnaparamita texts, the Gandavyuha Sutra, the Lalitavistra Sutra, the Avadamsaka Sutra, the Dharmaguptaka Vinaya, and the Mulasarvastavada Vinaya. In some of these texts, the Arapakana syllabary serves as a mnemonic for important Mahayana concepts. Due to its association with him, Arapakana may even serve as an alternate name for Manjusri. The Sutra on Perfect Wisdom defines the significance of each syllable thus. A is a door to the insight that all dharmas are unproduced from the very beginning Ra is a door to the insight that all dharmas are without dirt Pa is a door to the insight that all dharmas have been expounded in the ultimate sense paramatha. Ca is a door to the insight that the decrease or rebirth of any dharma cannot be apprehended, because all dharmas do not decrease, nor are they reborn. Na is a door to the insight that the names of all dharmas have vanished, the essential nature behind names cannot be gained or lost, Tibetan pronunciation is slightly different and so the Tibetan characters read, Om Ra Pa Tsanad Tibetan, Wiley, Om Ra Pa Tsanad plus Hai. In Tibetan tradition, this mantra is believed to enhance wisdom and improve one's skills in debating, memory, writing, and other literary abilities. D is the seed syllable of the mantra and is chanted with greater emphasis and also repeated a number of times as a decrescendo. In Buddhist cultures In China Manjusri is known in China as Wenshu, Chinese, Wenshu, Pinyin, Wenshu. Mount Wutai in Shanxi, one of the four sacred mountains of China, is considered by Chinese Buddhists to be his bodhimanda. He was said to bestow spectacular visionary experiences to those on selected mountain peaks and caves there. In Mount Watai's Foguang Temple, the Manjusri Hall to the right of its main hall was recognized to have been built in 1137 during the Jin dynasty. The hall was thoroughly studied, mapped and first photographed by early 20th-century Chinese architects Liang Sicheng and Lin Huiyan. These made it a popular place of pilgrimage, but patriarchs including Lin Ji Yijian and Yunmen Wenyan declared the mountain off limits. Mount Wutai was also associated with the East Mountain teaching. Manjusri has been associated with Mount Wutai since ancient times. Paul Williams writes, Apparently the association of Manjusri with Wutai, Wutai Shan in North China was known in classical times in India itself, identified by Chinese scholars with the mountain in the northeast when seen from India or Central Asia referred to as the abode of Manjusri in the Avadamsaka Sutra. There are said to have been pilgrimages from India and other Asian countries to Wutai Shan by the 7th century. According to official histories from the Qing dynasty, Nurichi, a military leader of the Jurchens of northeast China and founder of what became the Qing dynasty, named his tribe after Manjusri as the Manchus. The true origin of the name Manchu is disputed. Monk Hanshan Hanshan is widely considered to be a metaphorical manifestation of Manjusri. He is known for having co written the following famous poem about reincarnation with Monk Shide Drumming your grandpa in the shrine. Cooking your aunts in the pot Marrying your grandma in the past Should I laugh or not? Tang shang da gu da gong pai guo na jian zu shi gu ni ang san shi zu mu ku wei fu wo jin bu si o dang hi In Tibet In Tibetan Buddhism, Manjusri manifests in a number of different tantric forms. Yamantaka meaning terminator of Yama i.e. death is the wrathful manifestation of Manjusri, popular within the Gelug school of Tibetan Buddhism. Other variations upon his traditional form as Manjusri include Namasangiti, Arapakana Manjushri, etc. In Nepal According to Swayambhu Purana, the Kathmandu Valley was once a lake. It is believed that Manjusri came on a pilgrimage from his earthly abode Wataishan five-peaked mountain in China. He saw a lotus flower in the center of the lake, which emitted brilliant radiance. He cut a gorge at Chovar with his flaming sword to allow the lake to drain. 
The place where the lotus flower settled became the Great Swayambunath Stupa and the valley thus became habitable. In Indonesia In 8th century Java during the Medang Kingdom, Manjusri was a prominent deity revered by the Sailendra dynasty, patrons of Mahayana Buddhism. The Kelurak inscription and Manjusrigra inscription mentioned about the construction of a grand prasada named Vajrasana Manjusrigra Vajra House of Manjusri identified today as Sewu Temple, located just 800 metres north of the Prambanan. Sewu is the second largest Buddhist temple in central Java after Borobudur. The depiction of Manjusri in Sailendra art is similar to those of the Pala Empire style of Nalanda, Bihar. Manjusri was portrayed as a youthful handsome man with the palm of his hands tattooed with the image of a flower. His right hand is facing down with an open palm while his left hand holds an utpala blue lotus. He also uses the necklace made of tiger canine teeth. <laughs> Gallery <laughs>